period of my imprisonment, when we have been handcuffed, is to use soap and water to sleep off the handcuff for a night. <laughs> That's how we have been used to. Having said that, uh, I must commend our brother here for the tenacity of his spirit to make sure that every year this very house is brought alive by activating the spirit of June 12. I understand that there are many places where this event has been organized by different groups and governments. But I believe what is taking place here is the heart, the soul, the root, and the seed of the story. This is a house very well known by myself. I'm not just an activist. But this is a house that I have always come to visit Chibenkyo personally. And I'm in my mid-50s. And you can count, you can subtract from 1993 out of my age. And how I was able to always visit this house on his invitation. And the person that has always been receiving me here has been Mr. Fred Eno, Abiola's personal assistant, who is now based in Abuja and working with the United Nations. Fred has been one of Chief MKO's strategists. And where we used to sleep with each other, come here, as a boys' quarters in this Hope 93 office, and that has been the place where I've always stayed each time I come to see Chidam Kim. And in this house, I met a number of later Nadeko personalities, including Aswaji Tunibu, Ibrahim Adesanya, and several others. Bola Iki and Ko, we are all, I believe, in the living room, maybe it's up here, I think. That's where we have always and I always come here in company with of um, Dr. Beko and Fashio. By that time, Beko was the chairman of Campaign for Democracy, and I was the vice chairman of Campaign for Democracy for Northern part of Nigeria. So we visit here, and then we discuss strategies of what needs to be done. I have watched the documentary. It's a well researched clip that clearly identified those who fought and sacrificed for democracy. But from that clip, you can see that people from my own part of the country, those of us, the House of Light, are less than 20% of the whole number. What actually happened? For a man that was voted by almost 90% of the country. But when he came to the resistance, the battle was more fierce from this part of the country. Well, for some of us from the north, myself, Kwadal Umar, Balare de Musa, Bala Usman, and several other socialist, Marxist, and democratic and revolutionary forces. We came together and said, actually our people have voted for Chibam King. But now the election has been annulled. And if we don't leave the struggle, the historical impression will be that our own part of the country, the northern part, is complicit in the annulment. And as such, there are some of us that have to make a mark. No matter not in that struggle, 
we will not have been in this game. So we let the struggle and Chief MQ was ever appreciative of it as it goes on. It is 22 years since the restoration of democratic rule. And it is apt to say that this democracy was a product and a beneficiary of that struggle that took place after the annulment. Because the idea of bringing General Obasanjo was to see how that injustice can be ameliorated, which became impossible despite all. And the principle of people from this part of the country has been that if June 12 will have died, then with the appointment of Shonika as head of state, he will have died at that very time because he is a Yoruba from the same ethnic group which is MQ Abiola. Then if Shonika couldn't have extinguished the flames of resistance of June 12, then nobody could have done it. That's a fact of the matter. Something I was privileged to, to learn from Chief MQ, which later these days has come up as part of the national conversation, was the issue of how was he able to achieve success despite agreeing to the Muslim Muslim ticket. Hmm. You see, it was possible for him to do that because he has invested a lot in that part of the country. To the point that people don't look at him from a religious perspective. So you must invest. Up to today, there is no one, no individual in what the northern part of Niger and South that has invested so much in human capital development like Chief MQ. But I know what he has said because he called me and I came here to his house and I went upstairs. And I sat with him. You know, in Islam, it is said, if you die, when people are talking about you, the angels will wake you up for you to hear it. And when they are done, they will tell you to go back. That's in Islam. So, whatever is being said about you, then kill, whether people are saying good or bad, you will be working up to hear it. The narrative, the actual narrative. MQ said, Babengida called him and asked him, don't attempt a Muslim Muslim ticket. That's not good for the country. Peace and unity of this country. Then he asked him, who do you want me to select? He said, Pascal Bafi was then the NLC president. <coughs> then he responded to him, okay, I had your opinion. It's okay, I will consider that. The late General Sheikh Musa Aradwa, whom we happened to meet in Kirikiri, elder brother of President Umar Musa Aradwa, the one you know. So many young people don't know General Aradwa. They only know of the one who was the president. General Eradua told Abdullah to pick Atiqua as his vice president. He asked him why. He said, well, he will stand by you from the beginning to the end. MKO said he had other ideas from different people. <clears throat> and then he resolved to pick Baba Gade Kingibi because Kingibi came second in the primaries that was held in trust. 
and he wanted the unity of the party. And for somebody like Kingili, who is not known before that very time, to have been able to command such followership and such votes, I believe he will have an asset. So when he decided on Kingili, he invited the leadership of Khan. One of the meetings took place in the Federal Palace Hotel. As a young man, sometimes when I come and he's going to a meeting, he will say, after he listened to all the bigger persons, I think in order for me not to be unhappy that he has not listened, he will say, okay, come and let's go. I'm going to a meeting together. Then we will now go together with him. They went to this federal palace and sat. Okay, Kogi, Archbishop of Kogi, was there. That was a heat tent debate. Because the Khan at that very time said no to the Muslims. There was serious battle. And Chief MKO tried to explain to them whatever he wants to do, let him achieve it first. Most important thing is let's win the election. He's trying to address a certain sentiment from the some part of the country. And they should not bother that he is going to win this election. And he, to a certain point, of course, he wanted to walk out. I think he gave him brought him back. So, other things that happen, there is a proverb in Hausa that you will not hear the death of the king from my mouth. <laughs> so whatever happened between Khan and Chief MQ and others, I'm too young to talk. So all those people are alive to tell you what happened. I don't know. 